of days, but you also talk extensively about experience. And most retail CEOs now believe that 65% of retail CEOs believe that customer experience will be more critical for long-term sustainability of the business than product. But essential underpinning to trust, to experience, is trust. Engagement rests on trust. So let me ask you this. Can you trust what I'm telling you now? Can you actually trust me? We are in a crisis. Last year in 2018, <coughs> was at its lowest level ever in its recorded history of almost 20 years. There was a 37 point drop across all industries in trust. Unbelievable given the fact that around the world unemployment is low, eco economies are actually burgeoning, right? Why is that? What do you do? What are the ingredients to building trust? Seven out of 10 people who answered that Edelman Trust Index said that the most important job of CEOs was to build trust. 97% of people say they will be more loyal to a brand they trust. And over 70%, 73% say they'll pay more if they trust the brand and it's transparent. So how do you build trust? I want you to close your eyes for a minute. Just close your eyes. Just take a person, someone, some team. The person might have been your mom, your dad, your granny, your sibling, your friend. What were the feelings you had that first time you experienced your really deep trust? There were things I'm going to say, like you felt really understood. You felt really supported. You felt that person or that group had your back. You felt like they challenged you and did what was good for you. You trusted their bona fides and their good intentions. Those are probably the feelings you have when you think about your spouse, your kids, things that make you feel great. Those are the raw ingredients of trust. And I'm going to argue today that those raw ingredients can be massively enhanced by technologies, but only if you as, lead as leaders have the courage to use those in a trustworthy way and create platforms and sustainable business models that respect and reflect those basic human ingredients is trust. Now, I'm standing here as an IBM senior executive, but my core capability from being a very young woman was an industrial psychologist. And I can tell you when technology is twinned with trust, that is going to power business growth. So let's take a look how they're building those raw ingredients into sustainable, trustworthy business models. So artificial intelligence. I'm not sure if you know this, but the retail industry is actually the furthest along in the world with artificial intelligence. We've just released um, a study of the executive suite around the world, which includes around 5,000 CEO interviews and um, analyses. And what we found is the retail industry is the most penetrated in terms of thinking about and using artificial intelligence for things like customer service, marketing campaigns, omnichannel optimization, and so forth. So there is a lot of potential here to take and build nation of even weather. We announced this week, this week that our weather company now can actually look at weather every hour in three kilometer radii around the world. Every three kilometers, we can personalize weather. And what we've been doing with much of our software is trying to hyper-localize data so that you can absolutely personalize customers. A part of trust with AI that we need to consider is, do I trust what you do with my data, and do you protect it, and do you secure it? And of course, we've seen loads of examples of that. I will just tell you that IBM is working really hard to make sure that AI, we understand the provenance of the data, we understand the protection of the data, and most importantly, models are transparent and do not have bias, and we can actually detect for bias. So the thing I would ask you to think about with AI, whether you optimize, localize, personalize, you need to push it because the industry will, you will be the leaders, but make sure your ethics and trust are very well bounded in AI. And again, we'll hear about that in a minute. Blockchain, I think, will allow you, allow you to share in your network contracts, provenance, and immutability and privacy and transparency between the way you work in a business network. So blockchain, for instance, allows, allows instant food provenance and food safety 
from seven days to two seconds with companies like Kroger, Walmart, and Global Foods because they put um, blockchain and food safety together and is invaluable in building trust in consumers that you have their interest in heart. So I ask you, and you'll hear about this, to think about blockchain as a way of proving your bona fides and proving that you are doing the right thing for your business network and yours. To a couple of leaders today who've really taken those raw ingredients and built them into a business platform that sustains a trustworthy business model with their customers. So to start with, I'd like to focus on AI and a company called Casino, which is a French group, Group Casino, 40 billion euros in France and in Latin America. And they are basically a grocery and high-end retailer who do, goes multi-brand multi across multi So just to let you know, Cyril is ideally qualified to drive the consumer's expectation driven by two major consumption trends. The first one is a shift, a massive shift towards online economy, bringing disruptions into the shopping experience, such as seamless experience, no queuing, product availability 24 seven, home delivery, price transparency, infinite range of products. The second one is a move from standardized consumption to personalized experience and lifestyle affirmation. For years, for various reasons, customers were satisfied with pretty much simple average experience. This is changing fast. More and more consumers want to shop at different brands, so no more one-stop shop. More and more consumers want to shop at inspiring brands corresponding to their value. For instance, um, eco-friendly brands offering organic products in relaxing environments. And even most importantly, more and more consumers want to have specific products corresponding to their own needs. Sometimes even personalized products with their name on it or some specific feature they've chosen. So in a few words, we entered into the era of anything <coughs> anytime, anywhere, and this is a big challenge for us. That each store should be unique and perfectly adapted to its environment and customer needs. The, the whole idea is that we enter into a multi-party supply chain, which your consumers can actually see, especially if you don't control everything. My next uh, participants here have absolutely pioneered new business models for trust and transparency using the, 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 the real capability and potential of blockchain. So I'd like to thank you so much for joining us. So we're going to jump right into it because everybody loves to talk about it. We are starting the chain custody program in 2006 to look at every single aspect, mm -hmm. every single node in our supply chain. Look at, look at it for certification against all the sustainable issues, especially in our area because of all the criticism, conflict minerals and everything that happens with the mines. We do start with mines, diamond mines and all that. It's our verification that we're dealing with every single part of our supply chain. We're dealing with responsible people, dealing with absolutely perfect procedures and it's being translated to the blockchain to the very end to the retailer and that's what it is. on the supply chain and as we stand here today we have over 2 million diamonds registered across the chain which transcends from the source of the mine through manufacturing and then of course into the hands of consumers in retail outlets across the US, China, Hong Kong, UK, and soon to be Australia. And we just completed a series of uh, millennial research studies with Warren University and Ryan University of Iowa. It absolutely vindicates uh, the fact that blockchain documentation is going to make a substantial difference on what people really do trust. And most important, what they can research and what they can understand. So we're looking at all the different aspects of it, now, especially in intersecting or interacting with that consumer as to how we can provide that energy, how we can do it and be as transparent as we can. We still have to deal with our very high uh, value industry, so there's a little bit of concern there. But we can bring transparency all the way now from the mines all the way through. We have one our consortium just completed this uh, and it dealt with the entire world. It's the World Wide Web to now the World Wide Ledger. And if I sort of take an optic view across the supply chain of the diamond industry, it's not necessarily just about providing a layer to instantiate records, to show the history of something, but it's to look at the challenges within the industry. And if the challenges within the industry are able to match uh, the 
solutions or the power that sits within technologies, uh, then blockchain serves as only one part of an ingredient. Um, certainly, I subscribe to two things in the space, but I don't believe that we'll be talking about blockchain in a number of years' time. Just like we aren't talking about the protocols that exist today that enable us to be able to share and send information through email and communication systems. We thought it was pretty cool probably in the first generation of the internet when we were talking about browser technology, but today, if I was to say I've got a new browser, no one would say, wow, that's innovative. Uh, and, and, blockchain alone, and blockchain alone will not solve the physical supply chains. It has to be a symphony of technologies to come together to supply um, a network effect. Uh, and so I think that you know, the next generation of this technology will serve for challenges within industry where there's been siloed data, where we've relied upon one person's opinion, and it's the collective nature of data, machines, and consensus mechanisms that will help to build a whole next level of trust, rather than just relying upon you. And I ask you a question and you tell me it's truth. I don't know it's truth until I can see your facts. The last and fourth generation of technology. So I think there are secrets in knowing uh, evolution of technologies that have come before us. And for me, you know, we are a small company, but now we operate in five countries. We're three and a half years old, and we have 75 people in the world. And the only thing that we did well as a company was timing. We knew and understood the technology well enough to know when it was going to get to a point of maturity. We had enough sensibility around the industry to know when the challenges would collide, and that, of course, we could marry a challenge with a solution. So I think there's something in that. Practicality, Facebook. We're looking to the efficiencies. We're looking particularly to the uh, all the noise of procurement. We they will take our bill of materials, blow it out there, and bring it all the way back to blockchain with all the level of documentation and transparency. We believe strongly this is going to happen. Uh, we're a long ways there. So it's it's above and beyond uh, just the uh, responsible part of this. It's a very important goal forward for our company.